Welcome to another follow along movement session. The topic of today's session is unconventional strength. Um, so how would you define conventional strength? Well, conventional strength is something that happens in optimal alignment. This is a central pillar of, of conventional strength training. Uh, so for instance, if I'm gonna push something or someone as hard as possible, ideally it's in this sort of position, right? This is where I'm strongest. And so we work on push ups and bench press and those sorts of um, conventional strength movements in order to develop that strength. Or another classic example would be if I need to lift something heavy, then a deadlift or a squat where I'm maintaining, maintaining a neutral spine and following all those cues that we're all familiar with would be a conventional strength um, training drill. Unconventional strength operates on the principle that most of life happens outside of optimal alignment. And so if we only ever develop strength in those optimal positions, then we're gonna be weak in, the, in pushing in, in this direction, for instance, or squatting where the knees aren't perfectly tracking over the toes and the spine can't be neutral and these sorts of things. Um, most of what happens in our lives is not uh, occurring under optimal conditions. And so it makes sense also to train um, for those suboptimal alignments and become stronger everywhere and address those weaknesses. Um, one, at least one reason being that injuries almost always occur in suboptimal positions, misaligned positions, um, where we're told we're not supposed to go. So the knee folds in and then I, then I tear an ACL. But if I've developed some strength there, maybe I don't. Some familiarity with that position, maybe I don't. Um, before we start, I'd just like to acknowledge a couple of my teachers, Simon Tarkor and Ida Portal, uh, who have had a huge influence on what we do at Praxis in general, and also whose concepts um, inform what we're, what we're going to work on in today's session. So thanks, thanks to them. Uh, we're just going to begin by warming up the, the hips, the lower body a little bit. So the first basic pattern we're going to work on is a diagonal circle with the foot. So if you balance on one foot, and if you, you can have your arms out to help with balance, and you lose your balance, it's completely fine, just regain it and try again. We're going to be drawing a circle with the foot on this diagonal line, the other foot. Okay, so my left foot goes forward, up, back, and down, circling on this diagonal line relative to the direction in which my other foot is facing. And your goal here will be to make each successive circle a little bit smoother than the one before it and a little bit larger than the one before it. And the rest of the body is free to participate and assist to achieve that task. Okay, change sides. Now on this diagonal, forward, up, diagonally backwards, down. It's normal for this to be a serious workout for the, for the stabilizing foot, the grounded foot. Aim to keep the breath smooth and calm, especially through the difficult parts, the most difficult parts, and those what's most difficult for you will be different from, from me and from anyone else. So just pay attention to the moments where your body wants to tense up and go, oh, I don't know about this, and try to stay calm and relaxed, keep the breathing going, keep the breath going. 
through those portions of the movement. The third goal after size of circle and, and smoothness of the circle is relaxation. How relaxed can you stay while drawing this diagonal circle? You can use the other foot as, as a little tail if you lose your balance. You catch it with the foot and then keep going. Change sides again and now we'll go in the other direction. So we went forward, up, back down. Now we're gonna go back, up, forward, down. Still working on that diagonal line. Notice if you're speeding up through any part of the circle and instead try to slow down. Normally your body will try to kind of rush through the difficult portions of the movement of the circle. The weaker areas that we're trying to awaken a little bit and, and get, some, get stronger in. Change sides, so back, up, forward, down. Again, working with that same intention of maximizing relaxation, minimizing unnecessary tension. Feel for which parts of the body, if this is a new task for you, often the areas in the body where we tend to hold Excess tension, unnecessary tension will start to light up. So maybe you feel your face trying to, trying to help out with the circle or one of the arms, one of the hands, one of the shoulders getting tense and see if instead you can stay as relaxed as possible. Of course, we're doing strength training, right? So pure relaxation is not, is not the goal. We could achieve that with different, different modalities, but it's a good intention to have maximal relaxation within the constraints of the task. And I'm keeping this foot on this diagonal line. Okay, good, change sides again. And now instead of working with that constraint of staying on that diagonal line, circling on that diagonal line, we're just gonna move the foot freely. So I like to imagine someone's moving the foot for me and I'm just letting it, letting the rest of the body follow as required. But still have this intention of exploring the foreign areas 
and trying to develop strength in what, are, what might otherwise be weak, weak positions. Okay, so you don't have to do what I do. We're just exploring. It's like the foot's your pencil and you're drawing shapes in space. You can draw letters, numbers, lines, circles, figure eights. Try to explore far away from the body, close to the body, behind and front, to either side. If you're struggling with balance a lot, just reduce the range of motion. Make it a smaller, make the bounds of the investigation smaller and fix your eyes on something on the floor. And that should help. Change sides. We're doing 90 second rounds here. I've got my timer on my waistband here. You could do more or less, depending on where you're at. I like to use the timer. I normally end up doing a little bit more than I would have if I'd just gone until I kind of felt a bit fatigued and then stopped. And as we know, it's often in that space just beyond where you would have stopped that the development happens, that the growth happens. Okay, we'll give the lower body a little bit of a rest and now bring some attention into the upper body, into the arms in particular. So we're just gonna work on some basic arm swings. The feet will be rooted, but the body can rotate as needed. Okay, so it's not just an arm movement, it's an arm swing, which is generated by the whole body. So it's a whole body swing of the arm, okay? So let's start with the right arm. We're just gonna imagine walls running alongside either, either side of the feet. The imaginary wall is parallel with the foot. And of course, if you have a bad imagination or a poor imagination, I feel like a bad imagination and a poor imagination are different things, you use an actual wall, yeah? And so we're keeping the hand from touching the wall, but we're also keeping, keeping the hand from deviating away from the wall. Working with that constraint, we'll swing the arm. And notice how much the rest of my body's moving. Yeah, so I'm rotating through the pelvis. In particular, trying to generate the movement from the hips as much as possible. And the arm is heavy. It's like a heavy rope swinging, swinging from the socket. Maintain a slight knee bend so you're not disconnected from the floor. If you lock the knees out 
and let the lower back arch, you're gonna lose that connection down into the floor. Basically the connection between the upper and lower body, which is why everyone is obsessed with core, right? All your physios are always talking about core strength. Your core is what connects your upper body to your lower body. And so if that's disengaged, then I'm just doing an arm swing. If it's engaged, I'm doing an everything swing. Okay, change arms. So you're aiming to stay strictly on the sagittal plane only, on this plane, right? The plane that's running parallel with your feet. Okay, we'll just do one direction. You may have done a different direction from me. Um, it doesn't really matter. You could do both directions. Now we're gonna try a figure eight swing. So this will be a combination of a circle on this side of the body and a circle on this side of the body. So now you're in a very narrow corridor and you've decided within that corridor that you're gonna do some arm swings. Okay, so we'll do the same swing that I was just doing, which is the hand travels forward as it passes the hip. And then we'll cross over and do the same forward swing on the other side. So every time we pass the hip, every time the hand passes the hip, it's moving forward. So forward, forward, figure eight arm swing. Forward, 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 forward. If you're feeling discomfort, pain in the knees, then try to move more from the pelvis. If you're still feeling that, then you can allow the foot to pivot. But if you can manage it, we keep the feet grounded, keep them rooted, and force more movement to happen throughout the rest of the chain instead. Forward, forward, forward. And I'm doing my best. I'm probably not quite achieving it. And you have the best angle to critique my form, to stay on these imaginary train tracks running alongside my feet. Okay, change sides. So forward, crossover, forward. Forward swing, forward swing. Forward, forward. Circle here, cross over, circle here. And that creates the figure eight. Forward, 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 forward. Rotate. Rotate, 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 rotate. Arms heavy, other arm is relaxed, hand relaxed, face relaxed. And generally it's a good sign if you start feeling the hand that you're swinging, the hand of the arm that you're swinging filling with blood. Yeah, it starts getting heavy and warm. Also, of course, different speeds are, are fine, right? If you go too slow, it's gonna become hard to swing and you're gonna be just doing arm circles, which is it's a qualitatively different movement, right? Uh, too fast might be a bit too much for you, but too fast, too fast is great. Um, so just find a speed that's appropriate for you, but make sure you're getting that feeling of actually swinging. 
down these swings, and we'll stop there with that one. They're an amazing practice to do on their own and just come up with the different, different planes and make up your own variations. We just did the forward swing. We could do the backward swing on the one side, the backward, back, back, figure eight. On both sides, you can play with switching and all sorts of things. The next thing we're gonna warm up is, is the squat. We're gonna spend a bit of time down uh, near the floor today. Obviously, we're gonna be working on the legs and the upper body as well. Um, so come down into the squat. If you can't make it all the way down here, then you can grab something to elevate your heels with. Um, I promise that this would be no equipment needed. So if you don't have anything, then just come up onto the balls of the feet. Go down into the lower squat you can manage. Okay, so we're here in the squat. From here, very simple. We're taking one knee forward. Notice I allow my other foot to turn out and this knee's tracking directly over the toes. I'm not folding in or out. That, I'm sitting on that heel. And you'll very lightly touch the kneecap to the floor and then draw it back up. Knee goes forward, lightly touches the floor, comes back up. If this is impossible, there are two versions of assistance. If it's only just, you're slamming that knee into the floor, it's just a little bit too difficult for you, then you can use a hand behind you. So if my right knee is going forward, I put my left hand on the floor behind me. I'll give you another look at it. My right knee goes forward, left hand's on the floor. Light touch, come back up. Very light touch. You're not allowed to let the knee hit the floor hard. Light touch, no plonking. Second version of assistance would be hands beside the knee. Hands either side of the knee, either on the fingertips or if you need it on the palms. And then of course, if this is still too much for you, you just don't go down as far. So maybe you'll just take the knee down to here and come back up. Knee down to here and come back up. Okay. Next, we're gonna just draw a circle with the, with the pelvis on this, this transverse plane here. So we'll take the pelvis forward to one side, back to the other side, forward. And notice that my chest and head are responding appropriately to keep me in balance. All right, so I'm not too rigid through the rest of the body, getting this kind of churning in the pelvis, and that produces this spiral up chain upstream. Don't worry about it too much, just let, let your head and chest move freely and arms as well. Other way. Okay, good. Back to your resting squat. Again, heels elevated or you can just be up in this sort of position if you need to. Grabbing hold of something or anything to get yourself down into some sort of squat. We'll put both elbows on the insides of the knees and bring the hands down, up, down, up. So we're driving the knees apart. There's a great video that Ido put out that's called Ido's Squat Routine 2.0. If you've got a rubbish squat, then I highly recommend doing that routine every day. Uh, it's on YouTube. You can find it if you search those words. And this is one of the movements that he shows there. Okay, again from the squat. Now we're gonna round forward. And if you can, touch your elbows to the floor. If you can't, that's fine. And then extend. 
So round through the spine, bring the head down and forward, and then bring the head up and back. Down and forward, up and back. When you come up, try to get as upright as you possibly can. Okay, beautiful. Next, we'll come down onto the knees. I'm just going to do some ratcheting of the wrist to prepare the wrist for some, some of the uh, work we're going to do next. So the first drill, set your index fingers parallel with each other. Other fingers splayed wide. And then we're taking the shoulders as far forward as possible, then bending the elbows out and then driving the pits of the elbows forward. Bend out, pits of the elbows forward. So everything else remains pretty much fixed and we're just ratcheting at the elbow. Elbow out, elbow forward, elbow out, elbow forward. Bend, straighten, bend, straighten. And when you straighten, you should feel a little bit more strain. Come on, into the wrist. If this is too intense, you just shift your weight farther back. If it's too easy, shift your weight farther forward and take more weight into the hands. Okay, now hold with the arms straight and shift the weight side to side. Arms straight, shoulders forward. Most of us don't touch the ground very often, and so we have weak wrists, deconditioned wrists. So some of this basic wrist prep work, this wrist strengthening work can be really fantastic uh, for many of us. Okay, next one, hands turn out. And then here, same thing, bend the elbows, drive them forward. Bend the elbows, drive them forward. And for this variation, the strain comes on when we bend rather than when we straighten. Hands stay down, bend the elbow directly backward, drive it forward. Bend, shift the weight side to side. If it's too intense, keep your shoulders a little farther forward. If it's easy, Bring them back or bend the elbows more. Good. Last one, palms up. And these can be quite intense for many people. And if that's you, you can bring your hands. Uh, you can even bring them back so that they're in line with your knees. Yeah, so you're kneeling in between your hands. If it's easy, you'll have them further away. And then again, we're doing the same thing. The fingers are pointing back. Drive the pits of the elbows forward. So the hand's not moving, the hands are fixed. We're bending the elbow out, driving the pit of the elbow forward. Bending it out, pit of the elbow forward. And see if you can make it to this position. Yeah, not just to here, but to here, where you can see both the pits of both elbows are pointing forward. So palms up, we're stretching. Okay, hold, shift the weight side to side, keep the weight as far back as you can. Again, of course, if it's too intense, you keep the weight farther forward to reduce the strain on the wrists. We're not looking for pain, just for strain. Stretching sensation, a bit of discomfort to prepare the wrists for more loading and to strengthen them for the future as well. to your feet. The next thing we're going to do is a basic controlled stepping or walking drill. And we often do this with a partner, where the partner is selecting the point that we're going to step to for us in self-isolation, so we're doing it alone now. It's a very simple concept, and if not approached correctly, it's not going to be any use 
any use for you. So the goal here is always to step with the most control possible and pay attention to the shift of weight between the feet. Okay, so we start balancing on one foot and then you're just gonna select any point to step to. When you step though, the rule will be that you're not allowed to put that foot down hard. So I start with 100% of my weight in my right leg here and then I very lightly touch the floor and still I'm at 100%. Okay, and then I go to 1%, 2%, 3% and ratchet up the percentage. Once that foot's down, I shift my weight slowly into this leg. And then the rule here is I'm not allowed to push with my back leg. Okay, so I have to draw the weight out of this leg using, using the leg that I'm moving toward. Okay, so I ratchet up, ratchet up, ratchet up towards 100% in this leg. And then at some point, that other foot becomes completely weightless and can come off the floor. And then I select a new point. Start with very light contact. You're testing the water. Maybe it's too cold. Maybe it's fine. Right? And then you decide, okay, the water's fine. I'm gonna go over there, slowly shift the weight into this leg, and then gradually draw it out of the other leg. Don't rush this part. We're not just trying to get reps done, we're doing this for time. So it's all about quality. Select a new point. Very slowly move toward that leg, draw the weight all the way out of the back leg. Don't push with the back foot. With control, shift the weight to this leg and then we select a new point. So just select any point around you and shift the weight from foot to foot, you have to figure out how can I shift the weight into this leg without pushing off this leg so that I'm getting that slow change in percentage from 100 and zero toward 100 in this leg and zero in this leg. And of course we can, we can just walk, right? So it's not about getting from point to point. It's about how you get from point to point. So take your time and try to pick the most challenging points possible for your body. Okay, good. Into the upper body. So we'll come down into a quadru uh, quadrupedal position. Hands and feet quite wide, yeah? And then here we're gonna do a movement you've probably seen before. Uh, it's a basic circle of the rib cage on the sagittal plane. It's the same plane we used before with the, with the arm swings. So I'm working along, along the grain of the floor here so I can work with one of these lines on the floor and I'm keeping my chest above that line as I draw a circle. Okay, you'll reduce the range of motion as needed according to your level of strength. So if you really need to, you can bring the knees down and work with this variation. Or if it's okay, you have the knees off the floor and you work with whatever size circle is appropriate for you. We're gonna do eight circles one way. I'm not gonna go all the way down. You could go all the way down to where the chest is brushing the floor, but I've got the microphone on and I don't want it hitting into the floor. So I have an excuse. And make sure you're going, really going back with the chest, down with the chest, forward with the chest, up with the chest. Notice I'm really up here. I'm not just here, I'm up with the chest. Now I've lost count. Do a couple more. And up, okay. Let me tuck this in and see if, see if my mic will stay, stay still. And we'll go in the other direction. So we went down, forward, up, back, down. 
down, forward, up, back. So now we can go forward, down, back, up. Two more. Beautiful. We'll go back to the legs now. And so we're gonna work with the same drill as before, but we're gonna add a step, which will be to add a squat to every step. So again, we start on one leg, Select a point, still don't rush it. I don't want you just going to the point. This is a waste of your time. Select the point, reach out, test the water. Okay, and then I can shift my weight. Now we're gonna add, add something to this moment, which will be a squat. It's not gonna be a normal squat, right? So any sort of squat you can manage. The rule will be you have to make contact between one hamstring and calf. That's how we're gonna define a squat. If that's not possible, maybe you have knee issues or whatever, you just squat down as low as you can. But if it is possible, okay, I've made contact between my hamstring and calf, squat complete. I come up, shift the weight into this leg, out of the previous leg with the same ratcheting up of, of the amount of weight in the new leg. And then I select a new point. Try to challenge yourself here. We're doing a strength session, right? Okay, shift my weight. I do some sort of squat. Come back up. Shift my weight out of the previous leg into the new leg. Let's do it. Get started if you haven't already. Pick a point. Shift the weight. Perform some version of a squat. Hamstring touches the calf. Come back up. Moving always with control. Don't rush the transitions. Don't rush the squats. We're doing 90 seconds. If you do three or four steps in your 90 seconds, that's perfectly fine. I prefer three or four perfectly controlled steps over 10 poor quality rushed plonky steps. Okay, very good. Great, we'll go to the upper body again. And so here, we're gonna work with an archer push-up. So this is a progression towards a one-arm push-up. And I'll give a bunch of different options, so hopefully there's some version that's suitable for you. The full version will be done with hands wide in the full support position. I'll lower down onto one side, keeping the other arm straight. Touch the floor and come back up. Touch the floor, come back up. Let's touch the side of the head to the floor at the bottom of every rep. Okay, that's option number one. If this is too difficult, you do the same thing, but with the hands closer so the other arm won't fully 
straighten, but we're still favoring one side by shifting the weight side to side. Yeah, so you can see I'm still coming across to my right arm and then across to my left arm. Next version, if that's too difficult, will be with the knees down. Okay, and again, you can use either wider and fully straighten the assisting arm. Sorry about the microphone, it's hitting the floor. I hope it's not too, not too bad. Or closer together with less, less straightening of that assisting arm, okay? An intermediate step that you could use would be one knee down. Okay, so pick your variation and then we'll do four repetitions on each side. I'll do it with you and I'll just vary between the alter uh, uh, alternate between the variations so you can get a little reminder. Let's do it. Beautiful. Okay, back to the legs. We're gonna do one last round of this stepping drill. This round, instead of squatting in between, uh, in the transitional moment between shifting the weight between the legs, you're gonna to touch both knees to the floor, okay? So we start on one leg, pick a point. This is my point. Now I have to figure out how to touch both knees to the floor. The, the goal, the best variation that I can manage is not pivoting the foot, okay? So I try to keep my feet in the same position. I can come up onto the ball of the foot or let the outside edge or the inside edge come off, but I try not to change the direction in which the feet are pointing. And then I will touch one knee lightly to the floor like we did with our squat prep earlier. And then the other knee lightly to the floor And then I shift the weight into this leg, again with control, draw it out of the previous leg and select a new point. Move with control to the new point, touch one knee, Oop. touch the other knee, and then shift the weight with control into the new leg. If this is impossible for you, you can assist yourself with the hands on the floor in the, way that, the same way that we did with our squat, with our squat prep. Beside the, the knee that you're touching to the floor would be the easiest variation. Second easiest would be to have a hand on the floor behind you to counterbalance. Okay, let's do this together. Minimize or avoid assistance where you can, but use it if you need to. If you get to a point where it's impossible, then you will pivot on the foot. So see my back foot is now facing forward. If I find that impossible, I can turn that foot out to the side to touch the knee to the floor. And like before, we're not slamming the knee into the floor. It's a very light touch.
finish the one you're on. Take your time. Okay, very nice. One last variation of the push up from the squat. We're going to go over laterally, perform a lateral push up. Okay, so the hands will be on the floor either side of the knee. I've got this triangle here. Yeah, so hand, knee, hand. A few options. The first will be just to come down and touch the head and then come back up. This will be the hardest variation we'll work with today. Touch the head, come back up. If this is too difficult, then you'll touch the near knee. So if I'm going to my right, I'll touch the near side, the right knee to the floor. For assistance. And then go to the left, I'll touch the left knee. If that's too, still too difficult, I'll touch both knees. So I'll go down towards my right, right knee touches, left knee touches, head touches, left knee comes off, right knee comes off, change sides to the left. Left knee, right knee, head, right knee, left knee, up. And we're gonna do four reps on each side on this one like we did with the archer push-up variations. So let's do that now. Again, touching the side of the head to the floor. Okay, so next up we're going to again make use of this concept that I learned from Simon Tarkor of taking any part of the body and drawing circles with it. This can be a great way to mobilize the body and also to develop strength. And so here we're going to work with the lower body, targeting the lower body in particular by setting ourselves in a lunge. You'll vary the difficulty of the movement by having your feet closer together or farther apart. So closer together will be easier, farther apart will be more difficult. Okay, so find a lunge. And then we're gonna draw a circle with the pelvis on this sagittal plane. Yeah, again, the same, the same kind of train tracks that we were using before. So I take the pelvis down, forward, up, back, down, forward, up, back. And you'll see as I do that, I'm shifting the weight between the feet as needed to draw the largest possible circle for my body, right? So you adjust the difficulty by bringing the feet closer together if you need to, this will make it easier, or by drawing smaller circles. Yeah, work at your level. Or if this is too easy, draw larger circles with the feet farther apart. Other way, forward, down. Up. Okay, change sides. So what do we do? I'm gonna go forward, up, back, down. The feet can be offset. Yes, yeah, staggered side to side, whoops. Staggered slightly side to side, but they should be pointing in the same, facing in the same direction.
out of the way. Okay, back to the upper body. So we'll return to our squat. And again, whatever squat you need to be in is fine. Here we're gonna work with the straight arm constraint. So the previous upper body movements we were doing with push-ups, bending the arms. Now we're gonna do straight arm push-ups um, will be one way to describe them. So we're gonna employ the same concept we used with the stepping from point to point with the feet, but now using the hands. So you'll select a point that you can reach with control. Again, we have this 0%, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, building up to 100. Well, toward 100. So once you've reached that point, the hand comes down, you're gonna shift as much weight into this point as you can while keeping the arms straight. So at a minimum, I wanna come up onto the balls of the feet. If you can, you shift farther and you come up onto the tips of the toes. If you can, you come onto the tips of just the big toes. Once you're satisfied that you've put as much weight in that point as possible, then you'll select a new point. This time with the other hand. So I never go back to having just my feet on the floor. I'm always transitioning from hand to hand. Select a point. Slowly shift the weight into that point and out of the previous one. And then stack this point with as much weight as you can manage. and then choose a new one. So you might get to the extreme and hold for a couple of seconds, two or three seconds, and then pick a new point. The feet aren't, the feet are free to pivot, but I'm not taking steps with the feet. Moving point to point. Notice that you have some autonomy on the shape you make. So here, for instance, I could go into this sort of position and stack, stack my weight here, or I could pivot on the feet, rotate, and stack my weight here. I could keep the hand below me and stack my weight more in a shoulder extension rather than shoulder flexion. So feel free to explore those different options. One more. Okay, return to the squat, beautiful. And then we'll come up into the feet once more. Again, we're gonna work with this lunge. Now the circle with the pelvis will be drawn on this plane. Okay, so the plane that cuts your body into a front and a back instead of this plane. So I'm slipping on the floor here, I'm sweating. So I'm a very sweaty person. <laughs> We're drawing this circle with the pelvis. And the goal here is to keep the pelvis on the same line the whole time. Above the same line on the floor the whole time while drawing a circle. Okay, change sides. So on that side, we went out, down, in, up. Okay. 
And here we're trying to challenge, like I spoke about in the very beginning, the tissues, connective tissue musculature, out of alignment, right? So here I'm in alignment. Here I'm out. And so I'm working on stability and strength a little bit to the side of optimal alignment and then a little bit to the other side of it. That's why we're making use of the circles. A little bit above it, a little bit below it. Change sides again. So this time we'll go in, down, out, up. Change sides. Again, you adjust the lunge, the size of the lunge to your abilities, trying to work a little bit beyond, beyond your current abilities. So what do we have? Out, sorry, in, is it in, up, out, down? I might be doing the same direction, I'm not sure. I think I am. Eight circles. Okay, very nice. Let's take a little break. I need one. I don't know about you. And just empty the arms of tension to some degree. So all I'm doing here is rotating at the pelvis. The consequence of that rotation is the swinging of the arms. Again, it's a arm swing done with the body, not an arm swing done with the arms. The arms are heavy, relaxed, and I'm using this as a way to help make them heavier and more relaxed, to empty out the tension all the way through the arm, into the scapula and around the scapula, the shoulder blade. Okay, great. So we're gonna finish with one last drill. I'm gonna provide a few variations, hopefully one of them works for you, for a bridge push-up or something like it. So we can push again in another suboptimal or unconventional position. So the full version will be performed on the floor. You come down into the floor. I'm gonna get my timer off my back. Set your heels close to your butt and your hands close to your head, either side of the head. The width will be up to you. We don't want them too close, but also not too wide. So just figure out what's comfortable, what will feel stable and appropriate for you. From here, we're starting by driving the hips up and squeezing the butt. You're gonna keep your butt on the whole time. If you relax the butt, if you relax the glutes, then the lower back tends to overextend and do too much work. So here we're not looking for a strong sensation in the lower back. If you're getting a crunching, a crunching feeling in the lower back, focus on squeezing your butt as hard as you can, pressing the heels down into the floor to help achieve that and shifting more weight into the upper body, into the shoulders and out of the lower back, okay? So from here, hips up, squeeze the butt and then we're pushing up into a bridge. Then you're gonna lower down, keeping your chest as far towards your hands as possible. So rather than being back here, where all the extension's happening in my lower back, I'm here where the loads are my shoulders and in my upper back. And then I lower down, 
lightly touch the head to the floor and push back up. So I'm trying to keep my head between my hands as I do that. Okay, that's option number one. If you can do that, then you can just do that uh, and you'll do between five and 10 reps, trying to keep the weight as far towards or through the hands as possible. If this is impossible for you and you have access to a wall that you're allowed to put your feet on, then another variation will be performed using the wall. You'll set up, again, figure out what distance from the wall is appropriate for you. Bring the feet up onto the wall. And then here I want my chest as far toward the wall as possible. Chest toward the wall and then I bend and come up. Just lower down as far as you can and then come up. Chest through the hands and then come up. So it's different from here where my chest is forward. I want my chest back towards the wall. Okay, that's option number two. And then the third option, you'll make use of a couch or anything else that you're permitted to put your feet on and do something similar. So the feet will be on the object. You'll take your chest toward the object as far as you can and then lower down and up and just go down and up as far as you can. If you can touch your head to the floor, great. If you can't, that's okay. Okay, so pick your variation and we'll do five to 10 reps of whichever one you're doing. You can go for it now. Okay, when you're done, come back to your feet. And then we'll just finish with a little bit of shaking, shaking of the limbs. For many people, this will find, you'll find this very easy and it's just gonna feel great and that's the goal. If it doesn't feel like that for you yet, that's okay. Excuse me. That's okay, you just need to figure out the coordination of how to shake that limb. So if we start with the balancing on one leg, Shake the other leg. And I don't really mind how you're shaking it, as long as it's this quick kind of kicking out of the leg, kicking out of any tension in the leg. And ideally you feel all the fibers shaking, the flesh shaking, moving in the opposite direction of the bones. This is a great tool for relaxation because you're, you can't relax. You can't shake without relaxing. So by definition, if you're shaking, that muscle's relaxed. The trouble is if you're having, having difficulty trying to shake, then you're gonna be using tension and not quite achieving it. But just give it, a, give it your best go. If it's not a tool for you that you can use yet, then it's a tool that you can develop. Change legs, same thing, shake the leg. This is like your free little mini massage that you can give yourself.
Okay, right arm. And here I'm using more of a rotational shake. You'll see boxing trainers doing this for their fighters between rounds. Again, it's this release of tension, flushing everything out. Flushing out any lactic acid that might have built up. And can also be a great tool. It's a great tool for after a strength session, immediately after a strength session. So you don't go and leave and still feel like you've got all that, all those muscles still contracting and turned on, which is in a way the definition of tension, carrying tension. Uh, it's easy to become that person when you're doing a lot of strength work. So this can be a great way to offset your strength work. But then also like if you are carrying around tension for any reason, we're in the middle of a stressful period for most people, um, that anxiety leads, to, leads us to carry tension. And this can be change sides. This can be a great, a great way to release some of that tension, right? To deal with that trauma. And it's something we do naturally. If you burn your hand, the first thing you do is shake it, right? You stub your toe, how you shake it out. Um, here, we're just using the shake to deal with the micro traumas that we've dealt the body during the strength session. I'm not as coordinated on this side. Okay, and finally we'll shake the whole body. So here we're just gonna bounce at the knees and allow everything to shake, in particular the chest and shoulders should be bouncing up and down. Just for a minute. Again, this is a great tool shared for me by uh, Ido Kotawa at several different events that I attended um, where we would do long shakes, and this is something I still do very often, five, 10 minutes, even 20 minutes, just standing here shaking. Sounds. It sounds absurd, but if you do it and you're actually shaking, then you'll understand why someone want, would want to do that. Thanks very much for joining me. Great job on making it this far. Uh, if you found this challenging, then I would encourage you to do it again. There's no reason you can't do this once, twice, three times a week. Obviously you wanna add in rest periods, rest days where it's needed between these sessions. Um, or if you're doing a lot of conventional strength training, maybe you add this, some of this material onto the end of your session um, as auxiliary work intended to prevent those future injuries from arising and build up resilience around all of the joints in all of these different um, planes of movement outside of those um, conventional or, or optimally aligned positions. If you did find this challenging, if you found it useful, beneficial, then uh, please share it around and stay tuned. We're intending to continue posting these videos for as long as this coronavirus um, pandemic keeps us in, in isolation and in lockdown types of situations. Uh, so thanks again for joining us and we'll see you next time.